Okay, so I got a little bit technical there. So hopefully that kind of makes sense to you. So in the last video was 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 really important. This idea that the neuron computes by summing up all of the different postsynaptic potentials uh, that is generated by inputs from other neurons. So there could be thousands of other neurons all fighting for attention, all firing neurotransmitter onto the dendrites of this neuron uh, and generating excitatory postsynaptic potentials, inhibitory postsynaptic potentials, and they're, they're, they're fighting against each other. And, the, and the, the neuron sums them. It's actually the cell body that, that integrates uh, all of this uh, all of these postsynaptic potentials, uh, and then if, if the total sum pushes the membrane potential to the threshold, it fires an action potential. Um, if it doesn't, then the neuron stays quiet. So you've got all of this activity going on, all of these inputs, and, but it comes down to one fundamental decision, one basic decision. Does the neuron fire? Does it reach threshold potential and fire an action potential, which then obviously be passed in, uh, to the next neuron? Um, or does the neuron uh, remain uh, quiet? So let's have a look at a diagram of two neurons that are speaking to each other in this manner. So here we have a presynaptic and, uh, neuron, and this is our postsynaptic neuron. And uh, here we have an action potential traveling along Releasing a neurotransmitter um, could be, uh, let's assume it's excitatory, let's assume it's glutamate in this case. Um, and if the membrane potential in the, the postsynaptic neuron reaches the threshold, then it also fires an action potential. So this is basically how neurons are speaking to each other. So at the bottom here, we can see this neuron is actually firing a series of action potentials. This is again a spike train. These ones are quite slow with a bit of time between them. These are quite fast. And then in the postsynaptic, let's separate those out. So these are the presynaptic and this is the postsynaptic, let's say. Uh, this triggers perhaps a series of action potentials in the postsynaptic. So now we can bring together everything um, that we've learned. So the this kind of, this, this is, Kind of the combination. This is this is uh, kind of bringing together uh, these two basic fundamental principles. The action potentials are generated by neurons. This is the unit of information. Um, um, this is this can then be passed. This information can be passed to other neurons via um, the, the 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 mechanism of the chemical synapse. And this may or may not, um, depending on the summation of these postsynaptic potentials, may or may not trigger. Uh, action potentials in the postsynaptic cell. And the postsynaptic cell can then deliver its information to other uh, neurons to which it is connected with its own synapse. Okay, so, so now we understand how neurons are connected and how neurons speak to each other. So we can now elaborate the picture and think not just about uh, you know, two neurons connected to each other, but about networks of neurons, right? Um, so let's try and draw this. So we might have um, neurons, uh, again I'll draw it very very simply, we might have neuron here connected, so again I'm going to draw these neurons very very simply, uh, might be connected to a, another neuron like this. This might be um, itself connected to uh, another neuron like this. Um, this neuron might also be, this middle neuron might be receiving information from, um, receiving information via a chemical synapse from another neuron here, and then perhaps another one here, like this, like this, and this might be connected by one here, like this. Um, this might even branch, this axon, we haven't seen this before, so you get two boutons connecting. Uh, this one might branch, let's say. So now you can start to see the, where the complexity of the brain can emerge via 
many of these. Why not? Since we've started. Um, uh, why not? Let's have that branching like this, etc., etc. So here we have a very simple network of neurons all speaking to each other via their chemical uh, synapses. Okay, so that really brings us to uh, the end of this unit. So in this unit, um, we have covered the basic structure of neurons, um, and most importantly, we learned, we have learned, learnt, learned, learnt, whatever, uh, we have learned, go with that, um, how neurons generate information using action potentials, and crucially, how neurons can communicate with each other and form uh, by forming these synaptic connections. Uh, and thus, um, we now understand how neurons can form networks uh, and not only generate information, but uh, share that information uh, with each other. And so now when you see a picture like this, which looks rather complex, uh, you now understand basically what's going on here. This is a network of neurons, and although it's quite difficult to easily tell which are the axons and which are the dendrites, you know that in there you've basically got, you've got the cell bodies of the neurons, and then you've got the, the dendrites and the axons, and together the, with the synaptic connections, they form these uh, networks of neurons. Um, fantastic. Awesome. So, looking forward to the next unit. In the next unit, we're going to um, we're going to kind of formalize the idea of information uh, a bit more clearly. So we've, we've already said that the action potential is the, the fundamental unit of information um, that the brain uses that's generated by, by the neuron. Um, but in the next unit, we'll look at exactly why we call this information by formally defining information. Uh, and this will be really important and really useful when we eventually uh, start talking about psychedelic drugs. So thanks very much. Um, uh, I guess I should say before I finish the unit, um, if this is making sense to you, if um, then please leave a comment. If there's anything that's unclear, again, please leave a comment in the comment section. Uh, there is a little tip box um, if you find, if you do the course and you find that you, you, you enjoyed it and you got a lot out of it, then I will accept tips. It helps to offset uh, the cost of uh, this equipment, but of course there's no obligation uh, that at all. This is an entirely uh, free course. Um, this is my gift to the world, so to speak. Um, so hopefully I will see you in the uh, next unit where we will be talking about information. Until then, toodaloo.